Here's another problem from the written assignment that I wanted to um, discuss with you guys. Um, students didn't have as much trouble with part A here, um, but I, I still want to use that as kind of an introduction to what we should do maybe with part B. Um, so T is a transformation from the collection of polynomials degree two or lower to R2. So, so what this transformation does is it takes a polynomial P and it turns it into uh, this vector in R2 according to this rule here. So uh, the first entry will be P of zero and the second entry will be the derivative at five. Um, so for part A here, to calculate T of the polynomial um, 3T squared plus 2T minus one, uh, what we need to find is um, P of zero which is, uh, which would be three times zero squared plus two times zero minus one. So we get negative one. And then the derivative of that polynomial at five. So there, scratch work in another color here. The derivative of this particular polynomial is 6t plus two, and so the derivative when t equals five would be six times five, so 30, plus two, so 32. Okay, so that's your answer for part A. <laughs> but that also illustrates how this, trans this uh, transformation transforms a polynomial into a two-dimensional vector. Um, Okay, so polynomial Q, which spans the kernel of T. So the kernel of a transformation, just generally speaking, is the collection of all vectors in the domain such that uh, when you do T of that vector, it's mapped to the zero vector. This is what the kernel is. It's the collection of all vectors that are mapped to the zero vector by the transformation T. So in this case, uh, the kernel for this particular transformation would be the collection of all polynomials in P2 such that T of P, which is P of zero, P prime of five, is mapped to the zero vector in R2. So that'd be zero, zero. Okay, so if a polynomial is in the kernel of this transformation, then p of zero must equal zero and p prime of five must equal zero so that both entries are zero now if we use uh if we set up just a generic polynomial in uh, p2 so that'd be some number a times t squared plus some number b times t to the first plus some constant so anything in, in p2 has this general form where a, b, and c are some numbers. Um, if I now substitute zero for t, then I've got a times zero squared plus b times zero plus c equals zero. So this is zero plus zero plus c, so c equals zero. That's what we learn there. So using this, we know now that the constant term here must be zero if p is in the kernel. Okay, now looking at that second component. Uh, so the derivative, if, if p of t is equal to this generic um, polynomial a t squared plus b t plus c, then p prime of t would be two a t plus b times the derivative of t is one, derivative of a constant is zero. Um, without even acknowledging that constant. We already know that constant zero anyway. Um, now we can plug in uh, five to that derivative. So this is two times a times five plus b. And if p is in the kernel, then this needs to equal zero. So 10a plus b equals zero. So b equals negative 10a. Okay, let me circle that. Okay, so that means that this polynomial here, 
if p is in the kernel, then p of t must equal some number a times t squared, and then b, which is equal to negative 10a, negative 10a times t, Uh, plus c, which we know is zero. Okay, so any polynomial in the kernel has the form at squared minus 10at. Um, I could factor an a out of that. So it's a times the quantity t squared minus 10t. So every polynomial in the kernel has this form. So it's some scalar multiple of this polynomial right here. So this is the polynomial q that part B is asking for. This is a polynomial that spans the kernel. Since any polynomial in the kernel is some scalar multiple of this uh, polynomial, then the kernel of T is equal to the span of this uh, single polynomial here, T squared minus 10T. And so this is your answer uh, for part B.